who are the key figures? Maybe let's put Nobel Prize aside. Who are the key figures? <laughs> okay, I like the second version of the question. Because yeah. I think to try to give a prize to one person in string theory doesn't do justice to the diversity of the subject. That to yes. me is... So there, there was quite a lot of incredible people there in the history quite, of string Quite theory. a lot of people. I mean, starting with Veneziano, who wasn't talking about strings. Yes. I mean, he wrote down the, the beginning of a string. So we cannot ignore that for sure. And so... So you start with that and you go on with various other figures and so on. So there are different epochs in string theory yes. and different people have been pushing it. And so for example, the early epoch, we just told you people like uh, like Veneziano and Nambu and the Suskind and others were pushing it, Green and Schwartz were pushing it and so forth. So this was, or Sherk and so on. So these were the initial periods of uh, uh, pioneers, I would say of string theory. And then there were there were the mid 80s that uh, Edward Witten was the major proponent of string theory and he really changed the landscape of string theory in terms of what people do and how how we view it and i think his efforts brought a lot of attention to the community about uh, high energy community to focus on this effort as the correct theory of unification of forces so he brought a lot of research as well as of course the first rate work he himself did to this area so that's in mid 80s and onwards and also in mid 90s where he was one of the proponents of the duality revolution in string theory. And with that came a lot of these other ideas that you know led to breakthroughs involving, for example, the example I told you about black holes and holography and the work that was later done by Maldacena about the properties of duality between particle physics and quantum gravity and the connections, deeper connections of holography, and it continues. Mm -hmm. And there are many people within this range, which I haven't even mentioned, they have done fantastic import, important things. How it gets recognized, I think is secondary in my opinion, than the appreciation that the effort is collective, that in fact, that to me is the more important part of science that gets forgotten. For some reason, humanity like, likes heroes and science is no exception, we like heroes. But I, I personally try to avoid that trap. I, I feel, and in, in my work, most of my work is with colleagues. I have much more collaborations than sole author papers, and I enjoy it. And I think that that's to me one of the most satisfying aspects of science is to interact and learn and uh, debate ideas with colleagues because that influx of ideas enriches it. And that's why I, I, I find it interesting. To me, science, if I was in an island, and if I was developing string theory by myself and had nothing to do with anybody, it would be much less satisfying in my opinion. Even if I could take credit, I did it. Yeah. It won't be as satisfying. Sitting alone with the, yeah. with a big metal no. drinking champagne, no. no. I think I think to me, the collective work is more exciting. And uh, you mentioned my getting the breakthrough. I, when I was getting it, I, I made sure to mention that it is because of the joint work that I've done with colleagues at that time, it was around 180 or so collaborators and I yeah. acknowledged them in the in the webpage for them. I write every, all of their names and the collaborations that led to this. So to me, science is fun when it's collaboration. And yes, there are more important and less important figures as in any field. And that's true. That's true in string theory as well. But I think that I would like to view this as a collective effort.